Hi, I'm Zach with Richards Manufacturing, and today I'm going to walk you through a demonstration of the SSC series cold shrink splice. This installation is for demonstration purposes only, but should not be used in place of approved product training or installation instruction sheets. If you have any questions at all while installing our product, get in touch with one of our technical experts by contacting the factory. Before we begin the installation, let's review the SSC's features and benefits and discuss basic kit contents. The SSC series is a range-taking cold shrink splice for use on medium voltage power cable up to and including 35 kV voltage class. The splice is fully qualified to the applicable industry standard, which is IEEE 404. The SSC series is molded in the U.S. from 100% EPDM rubber, which we manufacture in-house at our rubber compounding facility. The splice is molded with a semiconductive outer jacket, which provides outstanding mechanical impact and tear resistance. It can be ordered with a capacitive test point, which provides system operators with a unique option. Each end of the splice features an integral jacket seal and is expanded with a short, easy to remove holdout cord. Okay, before we start with the installation demonstration, we're gonna go through some of the kit contents that come in a standard SSC series kit. So first and foremost, we have the SSC rubber housing. That's front and center. We have two cable prep kits. They look like this. They come with items such as gloves, mastics, cable cleaning wipe kits, and um, we also have silicone grease packets. We have a core ejection or removal tool. There's two halves to the set. And lastly, we have a connector. So this connector is a range-taking connector for the SSC. There are two styles. While we're doing the range-taking version for this demonstration, there is also a size-specific version. Both versions are designed such that the bolts shear below the outside surface of the connector. And that's great because it saves uh, time for the installer and also eliminates a quality issue if filings were to get on the cable interface. Um, the difference between the connectors, besides one being range-taking and one being size-specific, also this range-taking version, the bolts are engaged using an Allen key whereas the size-specific version, the bolts are engaged using a socket head. Okay, so we're ready to start the installation. And we have gone ahead and prepared our cable per the supplied instructions, and we've verified that our dimensions are correct. In this case, we're using jacketed concentric neutral cable. We've gone ahead and applied what we call a jacket mastic, which is a butyl sealing mastic, just back of the jacket cutback, and we folded our concentric neutral wires back and secured them. We've done that on both sides, and we've gone ahead and parked the splice, so we're ready to proceed to the next step, which is the installation of the connector. The next step is to select the correct centering ring for the conductor being used in the installation. In this case, we're using 4 aught conductor, and we've selected the black centering ring by using the included instructions with the connector. We've gone ahead and threaded the black centering rings on both sides of the connector and we're ready to insert the conductor into the connector. We've gone ahead and inserted the conductor into the connector and we've made sure that the conductor is fully inserted into the barrel. So now we can go ahead and hand tighten the shear bolts down. We're going to tighten them in the same order that we will be shearing them in, which is outside to inside tightening order. Now that we've hand tightened the shear bolts, we're going to break the shear bolts off. In this installation, we'll be using an impact gun, but also a ratchet can be utilized. We're going to break them off in the same order that we hand tighten, working our way from outside to inside. We're going to hold our impact gun with our Allen key adapter straight and hold the connector and bring the shear bolts to the torque required to shear them. As you can 
can see the bolt breaks below the surface of the connector, so no filing is required. Now that we've installed the shear bolt connector, the next step is to install stress control mastic. This mastic is a gray mastic, which is different than the black butyl sealing mastic also included in the kit. You can see the mastic is labeled stress control mastic on the backing. Before we install the stress control mastic, you will, you will clean the insulation with approved solvent wipes in the direction specified in the instructions. Once that's completed, you remove the backing from the stress control mastic and we apply it with light tension at the semiconductive step. Same thing for the other side. Once we've cleaned the insulation with approved wipes, we are going to apply the stress control mastic at the semiconductive step by tension. And now we are ready for the next step, which is to apply grease and seat the splice housing. So we can use approved silicone grease or supplied silicone grease. And we are going to apply a lubricant along the insulation, the connector, and across to the other cable and that insul insulation as well. The SSC series is a hybrid splice, so the center is unexpanded and the ends are expanded with holdout cores. So the silicone grease on the insulation is really acting like a micro void filler, a surface treatment, and the silicone grease on the center is an assembly aid since the center of the splice is actually not expanded. We want to make sure to apply the grease all the way to the stress control mastic, but not up onto the stress control mastic since we will be applying another mastic later and we want to make sure we do not prevent adhesion. Same thing on the other side, on the other cable, right up to the stress control mastic, but not onto it. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. So we're ready to slide the splice housing into position. So now we are going to slide the splice until we feel a positive stop, which I can tell the splice housing slightly rotates but will not move without a good amount of force to unseat the splice. There's a tab in the center of the splice and then there's an indent on the connector we call a centering groove and those two are designed very carefully to interlock. So as you slide the splice you get a positive stop when you reach the center and now all you have to do is do a visual confirmation that the splice is centered. And we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to remove the holdout cores. The first step is to grasp the removal ring, the orange ring here. And we twist until molded in teeth on the offset bosses here and here break through two strips of tape which will allow the core to be ejected from the housing. So that twist right there has severed the tape on both sides. It's that simple. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and now we're ready to actually eject the core. So the first step would be we take one half of the core removal tool we insert it and just pry to give ourselves enough room to insert the second half. And we insert the second half. 
And again, this is between the orange ring and the flange on the outside of the core. And now, we simply push the tools, the handles, to the center, and that ejects the core. And we pull the core straight out. It's very important not to twist, but to immediately pull straight out. Twisting can cause these, this mylar film here to dislodge. Pulling straight out is the appropriate technique. So now we can remove the core from the cable. So we can take snips. Go ahead and snip the orange ring at, at the break point. Take that off. And then if we just pull on the core, the polycarbonate, the core is separated into two half shells like that. These can be discarded or recycling depending on your local r rules and regulations. And then there is a final ring that also should be snipped to remove from the outside of the cable. And that is how we remove the holdout core from the cable once it's been ejected. Now that we've removed the holdout cores, we're ready to install sealing mastic. So we remove the backing from the sealing mastic. This is a butyl mastic that we apply on top of the previously applied jacket mastic, which is under the concentric neutral wires. And we just wrap it around with some light tension and then press it into place. Now that the sealing mastic is in place, we are going to apply just a little bit of lubricant. This is just an assembly aid, really, to help deploy the jacket seals um, without disturbing the sealing mastic and just help it install nice and smooth. We've already applied the silicone lubricant. We just want to kind of distribute it around. Grasp the molded in pull tabs on the integral jacket seal. Pull outwards, extending the jacket seal all the way over the sealing mastic, jacket mastic, forming a good reliable seal. Fully deploy the integral jacket seal. They can be cleaned off. There is a little bit of talc powder on here. That's a factory assembly aid. So to gain the same color throughout the entire splice, just an ordinary cleaning wipe can uh, bring this to the same color as the rest of the splice. Now that the splice is fully deployed on the cable, the last step is to connect neutrals according to your approved and appropriate practice. For more information or for a demonstration, contact your local sales representative and thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video.